Hi, I'm Robert. Welcome back to another edition of the High Desert Ranch channel. It's actually a truck, tra truck talk edition tonight. And I'm going to talk to you about the massive calf die off of 2023 here in the West, specifically the Intermountain West. I don't know if anybody else is even talking about this, but it is a real thing. Uh, I'm going to talk to you as to the reasons why. Yes, it is April. I'm going to give you a hint. It's white. And if this substance is being created from the back of a military aircraft, do not eat this substance. So come along, join me as I talk to you about not only implications this means for ranchers, but for market prices and you as a consumer, but there is some things you can do to help uh, mitigate these massive losses and the massive calf die off of 2023. So let's get started only on the High Desert Ranch channel. All right, so now that I'm safely here within the confines of my my old glove, my truck, I uh, felt impressed to to talk to you folks about this. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I've got other truck talk videos. Some are rather dated. Some have aged well, but not in a good way. Uh, so go and check some of those uh, discussions out. Uh, for those that are uh, coming back, subscribers to the channel, welcome. I appreciate the support. Uh, as always, it's humbling to see just... Uh, how much this channel's grown and again i do it all for you guys uh, even these truck talk uh, videos are no different so anyways it's what i'm calling the massive calf die off of 2023 and i don't know um if it's being reported on uh there's some theories behind it i've talked to uh, i've heard a few uh ranchers guys that i don't know if uh I believe it as much just because I've really looked at the market trends and something I've really been interested in for a long time. And that is the fact that it's here in April and as you can see, we're getting snow yet again. And it's been a record winter here in Utah as far as not only the water content, but we've already blown past records that are 40 years old back in the early 80s we had record snowfall and snowpack and water content and if you're new to the channel uh, we're here at over 6,000 feet in the high desert and so we normally get close to 14 inches on a very good year of a precipitation that includes not only the rain but then the water content and the snowfall and specific to our our snowpack up in the mountains we're now pushing 30 inches of water content in our snowpack. And the old record was 27. And that was set back way in 83. And that was at the end of the year. Basically, Memorial Day is when that record was set at 27. And we're blown past that. We're at 30 inches here. And it's only the first week of April. So there's talks of flooding, this and that. I don't think it's going to be as bad here in the rural parts. Uh, up north, like in Salt Lake City, uh, that urban metropolitan area, there's been a whole lot of development uh, commercially, residentially in the last 40 years. And so um, there's, you probably heard in the news about the Great Salt Lake shrinking. Well, it's not going to be shrinking after uh, this year's snowfall. Um, it's There's going to be more water than they know what to do with up north. But specific to us here in central Utah, uh, we'll, we'll be just fine. The ground is super saturated, uh, but... Uh, these cement irrigation ditches and things of that nature. Um, it will be interesting to see as far as uh, where, where I'm at. There's plenty of high water ditches. They're going to be running at capacity along with the primary irrigation ditches because uh, that's how we water out here in the West. Um, we depend solely upon that snowpack and then the irrigation ponds and these irrigation ditches and even pressurized irrigation lines to water our crops. Um, we just don't get enough rain, like I say, 14 inches. So there, there's that. But specifically to the calf die off is, um, as I've been talking to guys, they've been losing uh, anywhere from 20% to 30% of their calves, which let me repeat that, upwards of 30% calf loss so far. And most of the guys have finished calving. There's a few that haven't uh, for me and for uh, some of the other old timers. We, we calve in April, and my grandfather even calved in April uh, just because of the fact that he didn't want to have to deal with massive calf die-off, and that is because of the harsh winters. And now for him, growing up, the winters were 
were terrible. And uh, even before his time, the, the pioneers who settled this valley, they were very much surprised. <laughs> Let's just put it that much. They came from Europe where, yes, there was snow, but uh, a lot of them, they didn't have the agricultural life. So when they were sent to settle here in the high desert, that first winter was even the, the native Indians had never seen a winter this hard. So it's not as hard as some of those winters, but we have definitely haven't seen a winter like this in a lot of people's lives. You have to be, um, like I say, at, at least 40 years old uh, to even remember this. You know, obviously probably closer to 50 years old to even remember a winter like this that we've had here. And so because of that, like I say, 30% calf die off. And now that's all relative depending on the, the size of your herd, but those numbers are staggering. And what's been interesting is um, you have to go way back to 2011 where there was a decent winter, but um, because of there was a decent winter here out West, but we didn't have the calf die offs. And that's what's so interesting. And I'll get to that in just a minute, but in the Midwest, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, in that Texas and whatnot, there was a massive drought. And so there was a huge loss in cattle. And then just a few years later, um, and there's been a prolonged drought here in the West, but essentially since about 2014 and beyond, it's just the drought has really worsened out here in the West. And so um, you've had the cattle die off of there in the plains, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and then you've had the continuous drought here out West. So ever since 2011, the numbers have really taken a nosedive as far as the total amount of beef cattle here, numbers here in the U.S. But the demand has uh, gone the opposite direction of the supply, and that is up, up, up. And surprisingly, since COVID, that number has gone up even more as far as demand. But the the overall numbers of cows has decreased. In fact, we're at record lows here uh, in the U.S., which begs the question, where is our meat coming from? Well, a lot of it's being imported and that's one of the sleazy things is um, as long as the cows are brought in alive and they're processed here in the U.S., they can slap a USDA, USA product of the USA sticker. Beef is the only one that can get away with that chicken and pork and all these. They have to state the country of origin. But there is a reason why, because the beef is a multi-billion dollar industry, uh, close to $90 billion um, is flowing as far as money. So there's a lot of countries like uh, Australia, uh, Brazil, and even the, the Chai Coms, you're eating uh, Chinese communist beef here in the U.S. Uh, so the fact that our numbers are the lowest they've ever been, demand is the highest they've ever been, you're getting a lot of imported beef uh, coming in. And what happened last year too, as many of you might know, is the fact that the beef um, production in the U.S. also decreased. There was massive drought yet again in Texas. So in a 10-year cycle, it hit Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, all those places, even up into the Dakotas, very hard like it did 10 years prior. And here out in the West, the numbers have been dropping steadily too, the, the herd numbers, because of the, the continuous drought. Now this year, it's going to be a little bit different, but as you know, we'll need a couple of years of sustained, not only precipitation, but winters such as this one to help pull us out of a drought. Um, I'm always optimistic, but the numbers don't lie. And like I say, we're, we're at a 61 year low and something that um, hadn't happened since they've been keeping records uh, with the USDA is the number of uh, cows versus like steers, steer calves. Um, there was a higher number of steers than there were um, cows, like breed cows. And the trouble that is, is when you're looking at all these herd numbers, they're the lowest they've ever been. People in Texas and all those other places were selling off in the Dakotas. And here out West, they've been selling off in record numbers too. I've been looking at the sell barn numbers. And um, because of that continuous drought, people have been forced to sell their breed cows because they don't have the, the feed to hold them over. And then they've even been taking them to slaughter. So, um, what does that mean for 2023? Well, if you haven't already locked in um, some beef with somebody, I would definitely do so because the prices are only going to go up. Um, again, because those herd numbers can't recover and they still haven't recovered. That's what's been crazy. That's what I'm trying to say is in the last 10, 15 years, the numbers have been on the steady decline. And because of Mother Nature and economics, things like that, whatever you want to want to attribute it to, it's just been a, a, a multi-pronged uh problem for ranchers is and now we've got this where who would have expected 
um, a steady six months worth of just heavy snows and bitter cold temperatures. And that's essentially, that is what's killing off the calves here is we've seen record low temperatures. Um, I have a guy up just a few miles to the north of me. They still have two to three feet of snow on the ground and they're probably going to get at least another foot and a half to two feet of snow here overnight. And he lost close to 30% of his herd. And I never seen him get emotional before, but he was, he was rather emotional and he's lost not only this year's profit, but into next year's. And it, it, this could spell disaster for a lot. And I just, it breaks my heart because, you know, it's the ranchers and the farmers of the backbone of this country and they're getting hammered both ways through weather, man-made causes and the price, they're not getting their prices yet that they need, but the input costs are going through the roof. And so if I can just say this, that for those that are um, just pushing through, because what else are they going to do? You know, it's a lifestyle, not just a choice that you can just walk away from. And even if you did, that comes with at a great, it's a, it's a weighty matter and decision to, to think about. So I, if you're familiar with me, buy local, 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 um, identify that rancher, or even if he just has a few cows, go to him and ask, say, you know, I'd really like to buy some of your beef. And that could be for some of these guys, that could be the difference between being completely ruined or at least being able to stay afloat and pay the bills and have some food on the table. And I'll tell you what, with the, the prices of beef, this is not going to help. Um, I've already been looking at the numbers, just um, your beef hamburgers, the like, people, the McDonald's, Burger King, all these guys that they're buying, they're paying 50 to $75 more a hundred weight than they have in the last several years. And the amount of numbers of, of calves and everything going to the cell barn, they're higher than they normally are. They're almost approaching levels in the fall when people normally sell off um, their, their animals and they're paying um, close to like I say, they're paying almost $2 a pound is what they're fetching um, for some of these steers. So the numbers, they're they are desperate. The, the packers are desperate for, for cattle because the demand is so high. But yet again, the numbers are so low. So um, that won't necessarily help the ranchers. It's good. But again, when you're considering the higher input costs for diesel, things like that, and now a 20 to 30% calf loss, that $2 isn't going to do anything. So Again, if you could help the rancher out and you're really not paying that much more, but you're getting a so much of a better product, but, you know, but that's some of these guys, they might not have been set up for that. They were cow calf operations. So they were selling at the market. Well, they might uh, be changing their tune now. They might be a little bit more open to um, backgrounding some, some feeders on their property and, you know, selling to you in the fall or early spring next year. Um, for them, as long as they have some money or they have a guaranteed sell, they might work with you. So it's one of those things of you can play a role in this, not only support local, uh, for every dollar you spend locally with a rancher, you don't go to Walmart and buy that sleazy beef. I promise you the quality is so much better, um, when you buy from, from a rancher locally. And again, at these prices now, you're really not even paying that much more. In fact, you're basically paying for ground beef at Costco or some Whole Foods, you know, boutique and whatever granola market. But you're getting so much more. You're getting the roast and the steaks for, for that cost of ground beef. So um, it's it's amazing. Like I said, I haven't heard much talk about this, but it is a real thing that's going on. I guess they're just wanting to constantly distract with everything else going on in the world that I won't even get into. It's just that bread and circus. But um, folks, if you can prepare now, it's not going to get any better. Uh, again, I'm not a pessimist. I'm just a realist that is, you know, we're all, in, <clears throat> excuse me, we're all in this together and uh, creating that parallel uh, economy in that parallel market, if that does mean supporting your local rancher, is what you're going to have to do. Um, get to know your food source because um, we're going to continue to see hiccups like this. And there's just, you know, we as human beings, we want to do our best. We want to um, make the, the best of a situation, but there's some things we can't help like this snow. Um, a lot of people run out of feed. They're now starting to scramble, trying to find where they can buy more hay because at this point the snow isn't going to melt. And by the time it does melt and then things start growing, it's, it's too late. It just, again, it's, it's going to take time for the ground to thaw out. Um, where some of these guys are looking into June 
when there's even some sort of growth. Um, and then again, too, the something else I thought about is with the hay as well. Um, hay doesn't do well when it has a lot of water. It actually needs a little bit of drying off. And then in the summertime, when you're getting your second and third cuts is when you need that water um, on, on that hay field. So it'll be quite curious to see how many cuts we get this year. Um, we're lucky sometimes to get a, a third cut here at this elevation is considered a bumper crop. That might be a, a thing that doesn't happen this year because the, the seasons are already short here, the growing season. And with all the snow here on the front end, and then depending on what happens on the back end, um, it, it, it could be bad. And, uh, just one more final thought is, um, there's, uh, up further up North into the, the, the spine of the Intermountain West, uh, Wyoming, Utah, Idaho border, uh, those calf die offs are, are, are similar too. even though their winters are very harsh and they're prepared for it. The same thing is happening to them. So, um, Please uh, leave comments uh, as far as where, what it looks like for you, um, as far as the weather, if you've heard, if it's a similar situation where you're at. I'm trying to get uh, some, some data from uh, different parts of the country just to see how bad it is. So whether you not you live in Nevada, New Mexico, up in Wyoming, the Dakotas, things of that nature, uh, please leave comments uh, just letting letting me know and others know just what's, what's happening. And... Um, if you have, uh, you know, if you're selling cows or if you're in this situation where you've had a massive calf die off, uh, feel free to leave uh, your contact information uh, in the comment section below or like an email address so people can get a hold of you. I want to make this a place where I want to be able to help people. Again, creating that parallel economy, that parallel society that uh, we need to be working towards sooner rather than later, like today, tomorrow or yesterday kind of a thing, right? So anyways, I'm trying to be upbeat and positive. So uh, remember, you only get so many trips around the sun. So decide what it is you're going to do today and get after it because that's um, you're not going to get very far just thinking about it. You, you just got to go to work and uh, uh, make break a few eggs to make an omelet, right? So as the saying goes, so I appreciate you coming along. And if you found this helpful, please share it with others. That way they can know what's happening. There's a lot of people that you know, when you live in the city, you just don't hear about this kind of stuff because if it's not on the news or social media, uh, you, you just won't know. But for folks like us out here in the rural country, um, it's a daily thing where, you know, if it snows 12 inches for us, it's a lot worse than when you're uh, in a well-developed sidewalks and well-plowed uh, uh, urban scape. So I appreciate you coming along tonight and thanks for joining me here for another edition of Truck Talk, um, only on the High Desert Ranch channel.